Yo! The Sega Dreamcast, the console that almost was. Just like a movie that can flop in a theater, it can sometimes rise to shine years later. And that is what happened with the Sega Dreamcast. This guy became extremely popular after it failed. Which is really unfortunate because not a single game developed for the Dreamcast ever pushed it to its limits. But in its short lifetime, it did produce a ton of great looking games, such as Ready to Rumble Boxing. I remember when I saw all of that jiggling for the very first time, I thought it was really cool. I'm talking about the game's physics, people. Come on! Dude. Before we begin, I'm only going to include officially released games, so no Half-Life for the time being. But it could appear in part 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, This is the day you have trolled for. Soul Calibur is a weapon-based 3D fighting game developed by Project Soul and produced by Namco. Released in 1998 as an arcade game, it was later ported to the Sega Dreamcast in 1999 with greatly improved visuals. This was an incredible achievement because arcade games back then were never ported over to home consoles intact, unless you had a very expensive Neo Geo console. Usually you had a lot of visual downgrades. With Soul Calibur, they took it a step further and basically remade the game. The Dreamcast version features improved graphics, including newly added 3D backgrounds and characters boasting not only improved polygon counts, but high resolution textures. The gameplay has been altered and improved upon with new game modes, new costumes, and an extra character. With the Curva de Leon, uh, we'll just go with the Immortal Pirate. Plus, so much more has been added. The game runs at a constant 60 frames per second, and according to Namco, it was an exercise in balance where every aspect of the visuals were carefully crafted to operate at 60 FPS while pushing the hardware in unique ways. The graphics are so smooth with very little aliasing to be seen. The colors are incredibly rich and vibrant that it's like you're playing a piece of art. Just as in Ready to Rumble and Dead or Alive 2, you get an awesome muscle flexing system that causes, uh, stuff to ripple. I like to call this the era of booby jiggles. Boobs. Bouncing boobs aside, which is enough to get me to buy a game, this title is phenomenal and it looks and plays perfect. A true masterpiece that shows what the Dreamcast could do. Oops. Sarah, baby. Oh, you one Don't make me hurt you. Resident Evil Code Veronica is a survival horror video game developed and published by Capcom. Released in 2000 with near perfect reviews, it's the first Resident Evil game to not debut on the PlayStation. The creation of Code Veronica started when Capcom team was trying to port Resident Evil 2 onto the Sega Saturn but couldn't figure out a conceivable way without huge sacrifices. Inconceivable! After learning about the Sega Dreamcast, the team soon began work on Resident Evil 3, or so they thought. At around the same time, another team was working on a direct follow-up to Resident Evil 2 for the PlayStation 1, which was supposed to be a spin-off title, but Sony coughed up some dough for the limited exclusivity on the Resident Evil 3 title. And so the legends say, this is how Nemesis came to be known as Resident Evil 3. Now, Code Veronica is still considered to be the true part 3 to this day from its creators and a large fan base. When I played this game, it blew me away. Wow, that blew me away. This was the first Resident Evil game I played that wasn't on the PS1 and the graphics were leaps and bounds better. No more did I have to suffer through all the terrible blockiness. Not only that, but the frame rate was improved, rocking at around 30 to 45 frames, but mostly sticking into the 40s. The game still retains the outdated controls of the original PS1 Resident Evil games, which isn't a good thing, but you do get used to it after a while. Now let's not forget about those sweet dual Uzis. Here, take these. Machine guns? For me? Yeah. Yo, Sonic! Sonic! Off the light speed. My bad. Jet Grind Radio, or known outside the US as Jet Set Radio, was released in 2000. Developed by Smilebit and published by Sega to near perfect reviews, Jet Grind was one of the first games to feature cel shaded graphics. 
I've always had a soft spot for cell shaded graphics. They look so awesome. Probably why I love the game 13. Nice. You play as a badass newcomer blader who joins the rough, tough graffiti tagging crew. You blade and grind while tagging cars, trucks, and walls, all while trying to avoid getting capped in the ass by the detective. I guess it's a pretty serious crime to be tagging up some stuff in this town. The gameplay is very smooth and beautiful looking. You get an excellent 60 frames per second with very little aliasing. Each new level offers a small open world you can explore and tag up. It's a pretty addicting game and I recommend it to anyone who loves skating games. You guys got it made, Randy. You have no idea how it was back in the Genesis days. Who couldn't think, couldn't adjust? Look what you got! My receivers couldn't do that! Sonic Adventure 2 was released in 2001 at the end of the Dreamcast life. It was developed by Sonic Team USA and published by Sega. It was designed to be faster paced and more action oriented than the original. Sonic Adventure 2 received great reviews for its gameplay variety, visuals, and audio. Though some did criticize it for its camera, voice acting, and plot. There are three types of levels. The Sonic Shadow levels with lots of speed. Tails and Eggman levels where you shoot everything in sight and the Knuckles and Rogue levels where you hunt three treasures. The Sega logo is slightly different than the Japanese version of the game. It's lighter and a few pixels higher resolution than the one used in other versions. Those sons of- Sonic Adventure 2 runs at a constant smooth 60 frames per second. It must have injected some of that blast processing. So what's blast processing do? It's always impressive when a game so fast can dish out a constant 60 FPS. Sonic has a lot of hit and misses when it comes to games, but in my book, this one's a hit, so go buy it now. You'll never get beat by the same whack play over and That's over. It. You better appreciate what you got, Junior. Hey, let me go. I think Ojimbo got a hold of a bad taco. Hey, I'm a legend. Shenmue 2 is an action-adventure game developed by Sega AM2 and published by Sega in 2001 to near-perfect reviews. This game offers so many features that are staples today, but back then they were not, and Shenmue is well known for being very innovative. It offered a day and night system, variable weather effects, non-player characters with daily schedules, open world, well, sort of, there's lots of loading. and various minigames. In Shenmue 2, they added new features that weren't in the first one. Asking for directions from other civilians. Fast forward the game's clock when waiting for a scheduled event to occur, such as if a certain character arrives at a specific time, and you no longer need to have a job as part of the main story. You can earn money by gambling, arm wrestling, street fighting, or running a Pachico machine. You are also able to import your saved game from the first Shenmue to bring over your money, items, and learned martial arts moves. That is pretty freaking awesome that they added this in. Graphically, this is a stunning game for its time. You just didn't see video games like this. What impresses me a lot is how mostly every NPC is unique and not just copy and paste it over and over. The frame rate is a pure 60 a lot of the time, which is incredible. However, during some night city scenes, it can drop to the 20s. Unfortunately, this game was never released in North America for the Dreamcast. It's racist. It was only available for the OG Xbox. The Dreamcast is one heck of a console with so many fantastic games that still hold up today. Sega may have messed up bad in between the Genesis and the Dreamcast, but they really did nail it with the Dreamcast. Minus the single joystick on the controller. Two could have been a game changer. That being said, you just watched my five Dreamcast games that still look great. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, ring that bell. And uh, well, until next time, take it easy.